going to be some question I can answer. Well. <laughs> okay. Let's start. What do you have? <laughs> um, hello. Welcome back to the William and Daniel Show, podcast number four. Today we have a special guest. Introduce yourself. Uh, coach Roxy, assistant coach of uh, Coach Roxy, assistant coach of Morocco, and um, the current U16 national team football coach of the Philippines. Okay, so let's get started then. Uh, since I I don't I've never met you until I've never met him, right? Probably not. So like, just simple background, like maybe like where you're from, or like anything like that. Uh, well, half Filipino, half Dutch, uh, born and raised in the Netherlands. I moved to the Philippines when I was 18, came to study uh, together with my, uh, my parents and my younger sister. I um, actually started playing when I was five years old. Um, at the age of 10, I had been scouted for uh, many top academies. Uh, parents didn't want me to, to move all the way um, to, to a different city just to, uh, to focus on football only. So, um, started playing for one of the top academies when I was 12. Then, um, uh, well, when I was 14, I had, uh, had problems with my coach, lost interest in playing. Then I um, stopped playing and moved to the Philippines. And um, the school where I was going to study some better. They had uh, well, one of the better football programs, uh, school programs here in the Philippines. Uh, got me interested, got challenged, started playing football again. And that's actually how I started to play football again. Then, during my uh, during my my college years, uh, I was helping out uh, coaching as well. So I coaching younger kids, and uh, I was trying to balance a bit of both. Then, um, after my after my college, I started play. I started uh, coaching at Southern International School. It was my actually my, my first actual coaching job, and um, I went off from there. I took my my certificates, uh, my uh, my C, my B, uh, AFC uh, certificates, and uh, I'm currently taking my uh, my A license right now. Um, and then this year, uh, took my uh, what appointed as the U16 national team coach for Philippines, and uh, been attached with uh, Morocco. Uh, who would you say is like your favorite football team? My favorite football team right now, but well, it it used to be um, Feyenoord, which is one of the, the, uh, the top clubs in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, right now, I mean, with, with the way they're playing, it's I'm trying to follow Guardiola's path. Mm -hmm. So he used to be very good when he um, when he was with Barcelona, changed football there, uh, went to Bayern, yeah. done the exact same thing, and, and now he's with uh, City. And uh, he's just changing for wherever, so I'm, I'm pretty much following him. Uh, Who would you say is the best, your favorite player of all time? It used to be, I used to be inspired by Overmars. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, well, he's just famous for it, being very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, played on the left side, actually, he's right footed. Um, played on the left side, um, uh, player of Netherlands. And then uh, moved to Barcelona, who went to, went to Arsenal as well. And, um, yeah, I think for me he's the he was my inspiration when I was young. Okay, so let's move on to a bit of more World Cup. Okay. So first of all, if in the Netherlands how does it feel that you know they didn't qualify? Unacceptable, I can't believe you asked me this question. <laughs> oh um this is uh well I mean for, for yeah. Dutch football this is a really big thing. I mean not qualifying for the for the Euros and uh now not for the World Cup, it, it says enough about how football is changing. Um, it, honestly, it's an embarrassment. We have so much talent. We have so much talent in, in the country, and uh, for us to be missing out, I mean, if, if you notice all the, uh, the posts you see on uh, social media saying that uh, Italy didn't qualify, and Netherlands didn't qualify, it's just that we're, we're a team that should always be there at least. And uh, disappointing, but I mean, it's good for us, so you, so you know. That um, that we have to go with the trends as well. Okay. Uh, do you think there's Messi's last chance to win a World Cup? Definitely, definitely. I mean, he's uh, he's re he's reached his peak already. Uh -huh. um, 
Messi has done so much for for not just this club but for the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, just done so much for football in general. Yeah. I mean, he's inspired so many people, mm -hmm. and um, I think with uh, him reaching 30, 30 years old, I mean, the next World Cup is going to be four years from now. Um, if you notice, like the, the top players, they usually pick around his age right now, um, if not earlier. So I think this is uh, his last chance to actually uh, get what he's actually lacking in his football career. Yeah, for sure. And who are your favorites to win? I've, uh, with, with the amount of talent there is in France, uh -huh. yeah, it has to be France. Then I then mean, uh, the depth of the squad, the way they were playing football, um, I mean, France, uh, France has so much talent in, in their, um, in their uh, squad right now. But uh, you don't have, you shouldn't be uh, uh, missing out on Germany, who is always um, won the last World Cup. Mm -hmm. um, done very good in the qualifications. Um, Brazil, who's yeah. uh, had a very good streak as well in the qualifications. I mean, with with the, the talent there they have, and I think uh, they want something to prove as well yeah. after uh, after what happened in the previous World Cup, losing seven one. And uh, I mean, they have definitely have something to prove. Yeah. How about uh, Spain? Okay, so Spain has always been there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there'll always be a country to be to be looking out for. But uh, if you notice that the the age right now of some some of their key players is reaching the thirties already, and um, with the, the pace of football right now, yeah, I, I think that um, some of the players they won't be able to catch up. Mm -hmm. Like having um, still starting with Sergio Ramos. Big A. I mean, yeah. good players definitely, but you have very quick uh, young players. Um, and with the transition for what we have currently right now, I think they will have a hard time. And I think um, conceding goals <laughs> definitely be uh, a factor. Uh, Italy also didn't qualify. Yes. Um, they've been solid. I mean, um, they're, they're famous for how solid they are as a defensive yeah, unit. Exactly. And um, honestly, I did not follow um, their uh, qualifications, but um, I think that um, Italy um, was actually expected already to be part of the World Cup. That's how I how I saw it. I was expecting them to be part of the World Cup already yeah. uh, with um, the way they've been playing, and. Um, I think that um, it, it's been a shock for everyone that it is not going to be part of this uh, World Cup. Yeah. Um, what were they missing? It might be the, the finishing, it, and it could have been uh, it, it could have been having a, a full squad for every quali uh, qualification game. But um, yeah, they're they're missing out, and uh, that's the reality. Uh, what's your thoughts on like because like before in the past? Clubs would grow through their youth academies yes. and like their youth, but now it's just money, money, money. Just buy yes. the best player. For example, like Neymar to, P to PSG or uh, Lukaku to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. How do you think that uh, money affects football nowadays? Um. Well, back in uh, in my days when I was still young, um, the Dutch league. I mean, sorry, I'm going back again to the Dutch yeah. league. It, it's been very competitive. Yeah. Like. Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, those were the clubs who can actually compete in European football. Mm -hmm. And um, if you notice that all those players were pretty much, um, you have all the, the Dutch players playing in the Dutch league. Mm -hmm. uh, now what's happening is because we have such good academies, uh, at a very young age these top players will be um, sold to, um, to the, the richer leagues. So they go to Spain, they go to England, they go to France, they go to, uh, to those countries to, to play football there. And uh, it's, it's affecting the Dutch league. The, the standard of the Dutch league went down. So we can see that um, if, as soon as you start playing European football, we can compete. And um, it's good for football. It's definitely good for football. Um, having all the best players play in, in one league, um, it's going to be more competitive. But um, it, it, it does damage. Um, some of the other leagues, and uh, no, but I think the competitive side is important. I mean, you want to have the best players play among the other best players, yeah. and uh, having 
like right now Neymar playing uh, in France. You can see the difference right now. Um, he brought up the level in France and PSG's um, performance right now in European football is, is unbelievable. And um, I think they're raising the, the standard in, in their clubs. So I think it's important. Uh, talking about PSG, with the, with like the likes of Neymar now and Mbappe as well, do you think they could they have a chance of winning the Champions League? Uh, for sure, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, it, it, it was a big, uh, it was a, a big uh, talk when you had uh, was it Vani and they were yeah. with the uh, with the uh, taking the penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's good. Um, it, it shows that young players want to be taking over, and um, it shows that Cavani is um, respected as well. And not just in, uh, in his club, I mean uh, over the world, uh, for for other players and other um, supporters to be um, defending his reason why he sh should still be taking that penalty. I think um, PSG, with the amount of uh, uh, money they've spent to get these players into their club and to, uh, to just raise the standard of football in France, I mean, uh, they're looking really good. I mean, Individually, there's just so much talent, and I think they're slowly starting to build a team as well. Attacking wise, going forward, it's unbelievable. Um, Mbappe, 18 years old, 19? 18. 18 years old. Yeah, um, at the age of 16, he was already signed with a contract and uh, played professional football. 17, I think, he was 16 as well, played for his country. I mean, it's unbelievable to have such talent already um, in PSG. Imagine his future. I mean, if they take care of these players, Neymar, who is 25? Yeah, 25. 20, 25 years old. I mean, those players are uh, just on a different level. And um, these are the players that you should be looking out for with the experienced players still in the, clu in, uh, in the club. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if going back to your question, they definitely have a chance to win it. Who would you say is like the best team in the world right now? If you could pick one. Uh, just as I mentioned before, I, I follow Guardiola. I mean, it's such attractive football he's doing. Yeah. And um, Barcelona, he raised the standard, went to Germany, Real dominated. Real Madrid. Real Madrid, Madrid sorry. Dominated, dominated football in Germany. Right now, it's City. Uh, I mean, uh, is it City I'm following right now? I, I, I follow them. I don't really support just one club. Uh, I think that what I'm looking for is now as a coach as well, is looking um, how coach can affect teams. And um, it, it does show that one person can actually build uh, a winning team. And um, uh, for me, it's really playing attractive football. I mean, PSG has such um, good attacking players, and it's very nice to be looking, uh, watching how they uh, have the combinations, how they uh, um, score unbelievable goals. And then you have City who are playing, um, watch well, incredible, incredible, patient football. And um, I mean, these are things that for for a coach um, you you be looking for, and I th and I think that um, if you were asking me to follow one team, it would be City probably. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Philippine football. Yes, go on. What are your thoughts on the new PFL league? It's good. Yeah. I think um, it's a start that we need. Mm -hmm. um, We've, we're very happy what the Ascos is going back to uh, 2010. What the Ascos have done, um, they brought football back to life. Uh, the UFL started. Um, they helped the, the local football. I mean, it was always football in the country, but uh, to actually have a competitive league, that's what we actually need. Um, the PFL, the PFL right now, it it allows the club to get exposed, and not just here in uh, in NCR. Okay, so we have the locals joining. You have clubs uh, like Davao. I mean, you're you're promoting football all over the country, and I think that's very important for us. Um, now we have young kids who are actually looking forward to eventually get to uh, to play this uh, uh, this level of football. And um, I mean, we're not just we're not just there. I mean, it's all new, but it's a start, and uh, I think the start is uh, very important. How does it feel working with Coach Harris as he is, you know? Probably one of the, the best Philippine coaches. 
Um, he was my coach at Sumbera. I've known him for a, a very long time. Um, highly respected, uh, not just by players, by coaches, for the, the things that he's done. Um, I mean, he's guided me to become a better player and now to be a better coach. Um, learning so much, definitely. Um, if you, if you see with uh, the players that we have right now in Morocco, yeah, it it mightn't be the the um, the depth of the squad that we have right now. We not we might not be having the best players um, in the Philippines, but uh, he made sure that with the players that we have, we get the outcome, we get the results, and uh, to to be competitive against anything that we play against with the amount of money that other clubs are spending sure. to get all those players there in their club. I mean, um, being top of the, top of the league um, says enough of how good he is as a coach. Yeah. And um, it's it just uh, the knowledge that he's sharing. Um, it's, it's not just coaching the team, he's really trying to help the other coaches. Yeah. So I'm, I'm lucky to have the chance to be under him, to be guided. And um, it just made me a better coach. Yeah. So I'm thankful. Okay, uh, what is the transition like for Malco when Phil and James left? Why are you leaving? No, no, I just <laughs> set the camera, you know? Uh, yeah, Phil and James have done so much for uh, Philippine football. Yeah. Um, if, if it wasn't for them, I'm not sure if uh, the, the league would have been here. Yeah. Um, so, just like Coach Iris, they've earned so much respect. Mm -hmm. um, they're reaching 30s. I think about change when I was 31. Um, do they still have the, the same ability that they had when they were a bit younger? Um, yes, I, I think they still have it. They still have um, enough to be changing the game. Um, it was out of our control. It was out of the uh, the control of the club for them to be staying. Yeah. And. Um, it would. It was their decision. I mean, for for the club, we we, we wanted them to stay with the club. Um, so it, it was definitely out of our control. But we do support them yeah. in whatever direction they want to be going to. Um, I always tell everyone if they ask me the same question. I, I think um, it, it was really up to the players how they responded after them to leaving. Yeah. Um, it could have been either. It could have been either way. We could have all stepped off, or we could have just sinked in and gave up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our key players were the ones who who stepped up and uh, kind of guided the the younger players yeah. to be uh, to be stepping up as well. And we start to work better as a organization in a team. And I think that um, that has been positive for us. So um, with or without. I think uh, the, the the squad has grown mm -hmm. over the over the months that we've been together. Okay. And final question on Philippine football: How is it like coaching the U16 national team, and does the future look bright for Philippines football and for the youth specifically? Um, as a kid, you always dream. Um, when you're young, you want to be a professional player. Uh, when you reach a certain level right now, mm -hmm. when I've played that level already, you start looking at other things. Yeah. I want to be playing international football. Yeah. You want to be playing for the national team. As soon as you reach that level as well, and you've, you've accomplished that already, mm -hmm. you start looking for other things. Yeah. I started to, um, started to um, coach. And as a coach, I started to have um, interest in developing players. Yeah that grown as well. So what else can I do? So I, I set targets, I set goals. And um, helping the youth football right now grow, I think that was uh, one of my goals. Yeah. And um, being there, um, seeing so much talent in one group, um, knowing that there's so much more talent, yeah. um, to have that so much control and to have so little time to be, um, to, to have so much weight on your shoulder, to demand 
we saw this well. Um, it's very difficult. There's so much pressure on you. Yeah. Uh, we were only given a bit more than a month preparation. Yeah. Well, in our in our um, interview yeah. before the competition, China, uh, South Korea, Myanmar, they've had a, a preparation for at least six months. Yeah. So that kind of explain already the difference in Philippine football. Their support um, compared to other countries. Yeah. Um, if we had a longer preparation, I think uh, we could have had better results. Um, very disappointing, of course. Um, people would say that even before we started the competition, they will say, um, just try to make sure that we don't concede too many goals. That's how they think of Philippine football. Yeah. And um, my mindset is totally, completely different. Um, every game you want to win, it's that simple. And as a coach, you have uh, you need to have the best preparation with the place that you have, uh, the facilities that you have. You need to make sure that you prepare those players to, to get the results. Um, so what I was striving for was performance. Um, putting the, the best players, possible players out there uh, who can perform against uh, the other countries, yeah. 11 players. And I think we've done well. I mean, there's a lot of heart, sure. uh, and that was what I was demanding for uh, for those players who are playing on the field, and to have the players on the bench ready to come on and give another hundred and ten percent. So results disappointed, but performance-wise, I think uh, I, I can be very satisfied with uh, with what they try to be doing and try to get the result. All right. Uh, so now we're going to do a quick fire round where I give you two players, okay, and you have to pick which one is you prefer. So, first off, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Uh, Xavi or Iniesta? Iniesta. Oh, Modric or Tony Cruz? Modric. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne or David Silva? De Bruyne. Pele or Maradona? Pele. Zidane or Johan Cruyff? Johan Cruyff. Uh, R9 Ronaldo or Ronaldinho? Ronaldinho. And lastly, Gerard Lacroix. Gerard. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's tough. That's so tough. Yeah. Okay. So what we normally do now to like finish up okay. is we'll have you answer something. We'll make a question, and you got to answer in like maybe like three sentences max, like one or two sentences. Okay. So, what like advice would you give to like an upcoming like young football player who wants to like has aspirations to become pro? Okay. Um. Dream big. Um. Uh, then work hard for it. Um, talent is given, but uh, what you're doing with the talent, it's really up for you. Mm -hmm. oh. Wise words, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Raynor. Thank, Thank you. Nice meeting you. That was us, guys. <laughs> See you later, boy.